This week we save over a thousand dollars by building our own living room tables. We're the White family. We live in rural Alaska and for us it's DIY all day, every day. We went to Costco last week and we got ourselves a brand new sectional. It's like Christmas for me. We've um, been holding off on getting a nice piece of upholstery, just waiting for our baby to get a little bit bigger. Um, but finally, I was like, okay, let's do this. Um, so we got it all set up in the living room and since it's a sectional, it really needed some occasional tables around it to kind of set your drinks on and you know, set a book on or even play some cards on for an end table. So um, this week I am hoping to make some end tables. So I know I want some sort of floating end table that can kind of move around. It's pretty lightweight and really sturdy. But on the back here, to service all the people sitting here, there needs to be some sort of table. Um, but I have an idea, because Jacob doesn't have a desk that's his on the main floor, and he likes to use his laptop, but he still wants to be part of the family. I thought we would make a part of this have a ch chair and an opening and it actually be a desk. So we'll make two consoles and then we'll just put a bridge in between it and a chair under it and that can be a little laptop desk. So these occasional tables that we're building for our living room there is a lot of like open parts and X's and slats and things like that that are going to get really difficult to stain and um, it's very difficult to do a good job staining them because you have to reach in the little cracks and make sure everything is done well. Um, so I just got up early this morning and pre-stained everything and then we'll cut and go. Um, I chose this color. I know it's not a very on-trend color and it's called Provincial by Verithane and it's got a lot more warmth to it. And I chose this color because it is similar to all of the woodwork that we have in our house. And we've got a lot of gray going on, so I was thinking warming it up with a little bit of warm wood might be a nice change. So we'll see how it turns out. We're going to get started cutting all these pre-stained boards now. I got a whole bunch of repeatable cuts, meaning the cuts are the same exact length, and um, it's almost more important in woodworking that the your cuts are exactly the same than anything else. So we have this track system from Craig and I just set it here at the cut length that I need. And I pre-cut this board in so it's nice and square so that I can just bring my board and butt it up against it and start cutting. Okay, so why that is so important is you don't have to measure and mark each board every time, so that saves a step, which saves a lot of time, but um, it also makes sure that every single one of these boards are exactly the same length, which is very important. So, huge time saver. If your time is worth, you know, $20 an hour and uh, this saves half an hour every project, do like six or seven projects and it's totally paid for itself. Hey, what do you got? So there was a lot of cutting to get to this point. Thank goodness for that little track system that we have because it made quick work of cutting all this and they're all exactly the same length. I'm um, so glad we pre-stained it because that would have been really a pain to stain it later on. So uh, right now I'm just going to start assembling the end table. And we have drilled pocket holes, one, on the ends of all of the boards that go this way, all the two by twos. So I'm going to use two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And these are actually exterior rated, but they're all I have. Um, these are the interior ones that you can use. Um, but I only have a couple of those. So I'm just going to start assembling. So the thing with a 
pocket hole, it might jump on you a little bit as you're putting the board in, but as long as you started in the right spot, it'll all suck right in fine. Alright, so I'm going to make one more just like that. Two frames are done and now I'm just going to go like this. These guys. Nicer side to, to every board, so just picking that side. Stain them, and then I'm just going to put them right here and nail them in place. And then we'll just put the slats on top of those and nail the slats in. So I got inch and a quarter nails here, and this is an 18 gauge brad nailer. And this is actually going to set right on the ground. So I'm not too worried about how structural it is or isn't. Okay, so the cleats are in, and now I can just take these guys. I want them in there nice and tight, fit well. And just space them, and then I can just nail them down. And I got a 7 8 inch gap in between. Perfect. Perfect. The brad nails are cheaper than Craig Jig screws. I love Craig Jig. And I love the products, but I can help you save a little bit of money. That's an easy way to do it. So I'm moving on to the decorative X's on the ends of the end table. And there's quite a few different ways to do this. Um, but one of the most successful ways that we've come about doing it for DIYers is just to describe it. So I took the board that I'm going to put in here and I placed it down and then just marked with a pencil where I'm going to cut and then cut on the lines and we know it'll fit perfect. So that first cross brace is a perfect fit. So I'm going to use some 2 inch brad nails, an 18 gauge nail on, and tack it in place. because it's going to be a little tricky getting it nailed but basically we're going to nail these guys at angles and then from the top to the bottom. Got one side done we're just going to flip it around and repeat the steps on the other side. The best part about this method with the nails is there's no pocket holes visible. It looks nice and clean and since this is not structural, it doesn't matter. We don't need big screws in there. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Our end table is looking so cute. I'm so excited about it. So 
For the top, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I feel like it's it's a pretty rustic piece and our house is pretty rustic, so to balance that, I want to modernize it a little bit, maybe give it a little bit of like an industrial edge. So uh, Jacob found this piece of plywood and we just pop a hold around it and fit it in like that. flush and throw some pocket hole screws in. So this time around we use the pocket hole jig set on the three quarter inch setting and inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. Perfect. So I still gotta stain the tops of the legs and maybe to finish that top a little bit. But other than that, this thing is done. Special thanks to all the pre-finishing we did. So I'm gonna set this guy aside and then we're gonna work on the console table project. So we're moved on to the console table projects and we're doing the little X's and I kind of came up with a trick so I wanted to show you guys how that works. So the first one's pretty easy to scribe. You'll just lay it in place and come underneath and mark it and then figure out what that angle is on your miter saw, chop it. The second one, the trick is again, lay the board all the way across like this. So that way you get it exactly where you want it. And then with a pencil, just mark really lightly where it crosses. Uh, what that's going to do is tell you where, um, so I got a couple of already cut, where you can attach at the center so you're, you're not off there. And then, then you'll be able to hold your board up and match those lines and scribe it and cut it and fit it. And that's been working really well for me. So the tables are all done, we put the tops on them, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a gray paint just because the wood isn't too good, it was just some scraps we found, and I'll try to make it look a little bit like concrete, and I also think that it's going to give it like a clean, more crisp contrast to how rustic it is. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm just going to cut it in with this. Should probably tape this. Should have probably painted these beforehand, but I'll manage. How you doing? Almost done. This is the final stretch. Is it noisy when you're painting or what? Yeah, when my husband starts cut. So. Almost done. It looks good, huh? Yeah. A couple of coats or just one? I think I'm going to try to do like a faux concrete look over top, so I might do it like a glaze over it. We'll see. So we're just adding the desk part right now in between the two consoles that we built.
dirty. Yeah. We put those uh, little pads on the bottom so it won't scratch our floors. Load her up. You put these on right here? Yeah. Sure. See those foam pads? That's so that our floors don't get scratched. Pretty nice, huh? Sweet. We haven't had occasional tables in forever. I'm excited. Somewhere to put your coffee. Let's put your drill. I guess he likes the new desk area. <laughs> I think he does. So Jacob and I teamed up in the garage and we were able to make all of these occasional tables in our living room for about $60. We use really simple lumber but by adding the X details in the wood slats you get at a lot more interest and uh, we used a lot of really common boards so that drove the price way down. Um, but I will warn you, it was time consuming because there's a lot of little pieces and little cuts and we did a lot of fine tuning on the cuts. So we'd cut them and then they wouldn't be exact. We'd trim a little bit off, especially on the X's. So. There's a lot that goes into this project, but it's very easy to build um, and I like the, the purpose yeah. that it suits. Is definitely pre-stain your boards because that was a huge time saver. Um, remember that the X's on the end aren't they aren't structural, so if you want to just nail those in place, that's totally fine. Um, another thing too is we definitely customize this project for our sectional here. So um, you can see we built two of these end tables and then the bridge in the middle, and it's almost perfect for the length of our sectional. And it's a really good spot for like a laptop desk. You know, we live in rural Alaska. We don't have a lot of stores around us, so we do spend a lot of time on our laptop ordering things, um, and it's nice to be part of the family while you're doing that. Um, I also love the fact that this is behind the sofa so we can store a lot of things in here and I don't have to be as concerned with how they look all the time. So if we have a pile of books and the covers don't all match or we have a basket full of toys that's overflowing, it's behind the couch and it'll look fine back here. And I wasn't so sure about this faux concrete gray thing that we did here. Still kind of iffy about it, um, but I'm not worried about using coasters on it either, so we'll just say that. <laughs> um, so anyway, we built the consoles and I'll definitely do the plans for that and we built one of the end table and we love that too. I love how sturdy it is and you can kind of just bring it around the living room, play cards on it, put your feet up on it, use it for storage, put the remotes on it. It's just such a versatile, sturdy piece. Um, with, in a really great size so and it looks really good too so we'll get the plans out for that I'm not gonna build a coffee table because we have a baby and she really likes to creep around the ottoman I don't want her banging her head on that but I'm gonna put the plans out for you guys so if you want the coffee table the plans will be available and it's pretty much exactly the same construction as you see here so, yeah yeah so. win-win our living room looks really nice my wife overdid herself here one got a new couch and put these pieces of furniture together and it looks nice. I feel grown up. We finally have like a grown up living room. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, we're gonna get back to work and we appreciate you guys watching this week. Thank you for all of the lovely comments and the likes and um, just watching. We really appreciate it and we're looking forward to next week's project. We'll see you next Monday. Yeah. Not bad, huh? It's a nice space. It came together really good. Yeah, this space was a little bit challenging because uh, it's so open. It's open on so many sides. So, um, and then you're, I don't know, it just, it wasn't just like your basic living room. But I think it came together. I've got a new rug coming that is going to. I got a bear rug downstairs. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so, it needs a little bit of fluff. It needs a couple of, like, it needs some texture. It needs some. A floral brought in, but and you need a little bit of artwork on the walls. But I'm not going to do too much. I like things simplified. Uh, it makes me feel relaxed and not like I need to organize or clean.
create anything. Nice. I like this couch. The other couch we had, we were all piled on it. A family of five doesn't fit on a single couch anymore. Yeah, couch The bottom is really perfect because the baby can't. Yeah, she can't hurt herself on it, and it doubles as extra seating. I would honestly, I would love to put that build the coffee table because I think it's really beautiful and matches the collection. But this is the better choice for our family. So that's what we're doing. No, yeah, win-win. Like I said, I like these a lot. I could see my wife using it a lot too. Oh yeah, answering emails or whatever. 